Hello everybody, this is Johns Hopkins with Baltimore Heritage and we're back with another of our 5 Minute Histories videos. And today I'm in the Franklin Square neighborhood in West Baltimore and we're going to talk about the building behind me, St. Luke's Church and now Youth Center. I'm pleased to be joined by Amanda Talbert who heads up the Youth Center. But of course, before I turn it over to Amanda, I have to say a word or two about uh, how the church got started. Um, and we're going to start our story by turning back the clock, not to 1851 when the corner stone was laid, but to the 1830s in London. That's when a group of Anglican ministers had the idea of trying to turn the church back to its early Christian roots. Um, all the way back then, um, they were called sometimes high churchmen um, or Anglo, uh, Anglo Catholics, uh, turning the church back to its Catholic origins, um, or sometimes a term that we don't hear today, Tractarians. Um, one of their chief uh, uh, sort of tenets uh, was this idea of a social gospel and that was using Christian principles to address social ills like poverty and housing and even uh, racial inequality back then. Let's fast forward 10 years to the 1840s, uh, 3,500 miles away from London here in Baltimore and a group of Episcopal ministers uh, were high churchmen as well. They had bought into this idea and that's the foundation of the St. Luke's congregation. They got started on a building at the corner of Hollins and Oregon Street. We we don't have an Oregon Street anymore. It's called North Arlington now. That's where they got their start. And from the earliest days, their social gospel was rooted in, uh, in uh, trying to address uh, racial inequality. The early church records showed that even before they built this building here, uh, they were baptizing and marrying and burying black Baltimoreans pretty much on the same terms as white Baltimoreans. By 1860, for example, the what they called the Colored Sunday School had over 120 kids in it, so many that they needed three sessions on a Sunday to, uh, to teach them all. Um, but in uh, uh, what to me at least is uh, more than just a little bit of incongruity, uh, some of the earliest members who founded and supported the church uh, were owners of enslaved people. One of them was a gentleman named Judge John Glenn. He's the one who donated the land here. Another one was uh, a guy named uh, General George Stewart. He was a founding member and early contributor. Uh, a hero of the War of 1812, also owned over a hundred enslaved people. Um, he was perhaps Baltimore's strongest and loudest voice uh, defending the institution of slavery uh, and uh, wanting to join the Confederacy. He used his position as head of the Maryland militia to try to block Union troops from coming into the state. Um, uh, in addition to that kind of incongruity, another of the uh, sort of social ills that the church took on in the early days was poverty. They started a mission, the Pratt Street Mission, where they had a library uh, and reading room for boys and men and a sewing school for girls and women. Um, things were going well for the congregation uh, in terms of numbers all the way through the 1800s, but by about the uh, middle, early, early middle of the 1900s, the congregation started to fall off like so many others in the city. Um, for example, in uh, 1896, there were 1,350 members. By 1936, 470. 1954, 278. And by 1994, there were only 70 members. Um, in 2008, a uh, minister came here, uh, 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 Reverend Van Gardner, and he helped the congregation uh, transition to what was called a missionary congregation, focusing on uh, this mission, focusing on the youth in the neighborhood. And that's how uh, the church today was transitioned into the St. Luke's Youth Center with after school programs and uh, summer programs for kids. And that's how I'm going to transition over to Amanda to tell us a little bit more about what's going on. Thanks, Johns. Hi, everyone. My name is Amanda Talbot. I'm the executive director of St. Luke's Youth Center, otherwise known as SLIC. SLIC grew out of programming that has been taking place at this church for decades. In 2015, a group of congregation members and myself met with members of the school nearby and developed a program called Camp Imagination. That camp was so successful that it grew over the years and then I wound up teaching at the school. While I was focused so much on academic standards, our children in this community need so much more. So it was that point that I turned to families in the community to ask them, how do we make sure that the children in this community have everything that they need in order to meet with success in life and academic success? At the same time, 
Camp Imagination was growing and we shifted our model to be community led. The families and community members know what needs to happen in this area. What they don't have is access to the resources needed to implement the changes that they know needs to happen. When we started to take this new approach to programming, other things started to emerge. A leadership development program called Moms on a Mission. Also, we are open during the weekdays, Tuesdays and Thursdays right now, for Connections Cafe. This is a time when people in the community can come and use the space to print copies, use the computers, meet, gather, build community. Our goal is to dedicate this property to be a place that shares our history, shares the community's history, speaks the truth, and bears witness to the beauty of renewal together. Slick is building a bridge of access to the resources needed to make this dream possible. We do not need the bridge to be built for us. What we need is for people like you to help us build that bridge.